So, like, if Anshar, fucking Anshar, took as long as he did, the final boss is gonna be fun. <laughs> I, would have, I would have just preferred if you just grinded off screen, but okay, I guess we're here now. I mean, I, I did want to grind off screen, but like, I, I, I reached the final <laughs> boss and I'm like, ah. Oh, Damn I just it. want to go for it. <laughs> this is taking a long time, but I'm already recording, and and I was already worried about runtime because of the 30 minute rule my recording equipment seems to run mm -hmm. on. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna record the final boss, and every 15 minutes I would make a save state, stop recording, close the program, reset the re uh, recording equipment, unplug my recording equipment, replug it in. And then uh, open up the recording software again, and then load my save state, and and <laughs> continue from where I left off. It took me like uh, three chunks to get the final boss done by itself. <laughs> um, but because the ending was tied to defeating the final boss on your first attempt, um. And because I was under leveled and didn't want to and, and and didn't really want to spend a lot of time fighting those long ass battles in Crystal Tokyo to grind up, and didn't want to get the the and didn't want to spend time collecting puzzle pieces, I'm just like, oh, I missed these these treasure chests on my way through, which is why I picked up a an item to sell at the antique shop. <laughs> I didn't know those those I didn't I didn't even know you could go through that door. Oops. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, I I saw the guide say you need to be at this level and you need to have these the, these pieces of equipment. And you need to put them on these party members, and and I'm just like, roll up my sleeves. Challenge accepted. I go in at level like 45 to fight the final boss, and. I thought like I would have footage of myself getting nuked to hell by the final boss that I could show off to talk about how the final boss has two phases and if you don't defeat it in the first phase you beat the the, the bad ending. Um I, I beat it on my first try by spamming time stop like I've been doing to every other <laughs> boss so far. The strategy. So um it was annoying, but you know, not hard. I'll punish you. Why are you facing that way, Usagi? <laughs> <laughs> Camera check. <laughs> this is not the final boss. This is actually the fight against regular old Lady Opsu before the final boss. It's a barrier of your of your creation. It really just more looks like a layering effect. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> <laughs> So basically what Opsu's trying to do is hijack the power of Usagi's silver crystal indirectly to try and change I'm Usagi's just... destiny. <laughs> I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> hate, 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 hate. <laughs> so we go back to the first episode implying that, that Opsu is trying to change the events that led to her becoming Sailor Moon in the first place. But the the scene plays out the same as it normally would with with uh, uh, old Darian Shields over here teasing the hell out of Bunhead for her thirty for her thirty point test score. And then the Teen Titans come out of nowhere and push them into Crime Alley to make sure this future is correct. What? Teen Titans go to the movie is a weird flick. <laughs> That's really cruel. Dick Grayson would never do that. <laughs> well, it, well, one again, one is the parody series too. Basically, the plot is they're tired. They're oh. they're they're mad that they're not getting their own movies, so they basically do shenanigans to make sure the regular heroes aren't made, so they can be the main heroes and get a movie <laughs> and stuff. But because they're you know the jokes you know the joke comedy series, they're comedically bad at it. So they go like, okay, we need to actually make the heroes again. So they go back in time and literally direct uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne in a crime <laughs> oh <my> alley. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's super dark. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of the few episodes that makes Teen Titan Teen Titans Go worth it. Yeah. Um, I've seen some Teen Titans Go. It's pretty bleh. Yeah. When they're actually trying and making it about like making fun of DC and superhero stuff, it can actually be funny. But unfortunately, it's too much of ha ha fart ha ha butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
So, in other words, it's modern Powerpuff Girls. Great. <laughs> anyway. Well, we just, like, rolled off into that tangent right in the middle of the, e of the villain's evil monologue. Sorry, monologue. <laughs> Throw the tear. You caught me monologuing, you sly dog. <laughs> So, for like half a second, Apsu almost hypnotized the other Sailor Scouts into abandoning Usagi, but all it took was a few cliche words to get them back on track. Now we're fighting Apsu, who is really tall Ooh. in a pencil dress. And this is like the only time that we get to uh, like see Apsu's design like mm -hmm. in detail. It's Long story short, it's Sorceress Ultimecia without the steer horns. Okay. <laughs> Like, she literally has the same dress and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the color scheme is a bit off, but, like, hair color is there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you played Final Fantasy VIII, Kitty? Mm-mm. Oh. Have you seen Sorceress Ultimecia? No. Oh, well, her design is something. Just imagine this design, but with, like, uh -huh. more of a skin color skin color. Yeah. The dress is red, and her silver hair is done up into giant steer horns for some reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah, eights, eights around the time where Nomura's character designs just started to become really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, there's a lot in common between Sorceress Ultimecia and Lady Apsu here. Like, they're both fucking with time to try and, like, make themselves immortal. Um, like, Ultimecia at the end of the game compresses time so that all time is compressed into a single point, basically. And the heroes let this happen because they're pretty sure if they kill Ultimacy, it will be undone anyway. So... What time is it? Uh, I keep telling you, there is no time here. Oh, wow. They do look extremely similar. Oh, you looked her up? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you see it now, don't you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, but this game came first, so... Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Obviously, I need maybe to, no, like, maybe no, maybe Nomura played this. <laughs> After, <a> question, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> possibly, considering it was a, a a game that came out around the time of Final Fantasy VI, and it was like um, viewed as like a competitor, or at least something taking the same kind of game and moving it forward a little bit. Um, yeah, I suppose they would have played this. Maybe he subconsciously comp copied Lady Apsu when he tried thinking of a sorceress who was messing with time. Then again, maybe it was just complete coincidence because when you think about it, the only unique thing about Sorceress Ultimate Ultimacia's design was the steer horns. <laughs> <laughs> Better or worse than Seymour intense hair? Well, Seymour had a reason to have weird hair because he was a different species and all of the Guado had weird spiky hairstyles. His was just the spikiest. <laughs> um, and that's how you know he's important in an anime. Uh, oh, I love Spot, the main character. <laughs> I love that. Like... I, lo I love that screen grab of Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> But, like, Ultimacia was a human, so she had to intentionally do the steer horn thing. But apparently it's just a, a common sorceress thing to dress yourself up in weird costumes with weird hairstyles and all. It's because, just a sorceress thing. <laughs> because Adia had that weird pop-out device on her back. And, and I don't even want to know what Sorceress Adel was doing. I mean, Rita Repulsa <laughs> has the weird cone hair thing. What? Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers. Oh, no, I'm talking sorceresses specifically in Final Fantasy VIII's continuity. Oh, uh, okay. I thought we were talking, like, sorceresses in general. And then Sorceress, Ade uh, Sorceress Adel had her own weird costume and makeup thing with the added bonus of being really, really tall and strangely masculine compared to all the other sorceresses. Um, I'm... You know, that would... Sorceress Adel confuses me because they have this, like, really weird outlier design for her compared to the other sorceresses, but we never learn anything about her at all, ever, <laughs> because she has, like, two lines of dialogue in the entire game and then just gets possessed by Ultimecia. Um, 
I want a Final Fantasy VIII remake, goddammit. There's so much in that story that could be expanded on and should be expanded on. I mean, if rumors are to be believed that Nine's next on the remake train, but... Well, yeah, but I but if they're remaking Nine, it's probably just like a graphical overhaul of the same game. I mean, I wouldn't re I wouldn't mind that, but we'll see. I'm just saying, I doubt they're gonna do the Final Fantasy VII remake treatment for it. But like, Final well, not, Fantasy not that expensive of one, no. But but like, Final Fantasy VIII could really benefit from it, and it might even be like one of the best games in the series if they did it right. Because there's a lot of good ideas in Final Fantasy VIII that could be rejiggered into something amazing. But... Oh, well. Eh. It, it feels like... if you, It just feels kind of like Chrono Cross, where it's like, you could have made it into something really good, but it just feels like they just don't want to bother. Well, I think part of the reason Eight and Chrono Cross in particular fell flat the way they did more so 8 than Chrono Cross, because Chrono Cross is still a really good game um, overall. But, like, at that point, it was it was getting into the awkward era of game design where the budget was starting to get really high, but the game, the game development industry hadn't really caught on to the fact that the budget was getting high, so they expected game turnover to be more or less the same than it, as it always had. And it was still a few years until the industry realized, hey, you know, three years to make Legacy of Cain isn't such a crazy ask anymore. Um, Ding. Well, I bring that up in particular because Blood Omen Legacy of Cain took three years to make, which was highly unusual at, at that point in time. It was like mid-90s. Three years was considered a crazy development period for a video game back then. Um... So if you if you made a game and it took that long, it was it was considered like really really and it, like I think the only games that came anywhere close to taking that long were the RPGs and even then some of the best RPGs still took like only a year or two to make. Final Fantasy 6, John brought this up in his review yesterday as of this recording, it was yesterday, um, he said that it took a year for them to make Final Fantasy VI after V. And it was a massive leap forward. That's the kind of development cycles that people were expecting around the, the, the mid to late 90s. But in the PlayStation, in the late PlayStation 1 and early PS2 days, they started to realize, oh, shit, these games take a lot longer to make than they used to. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so much more going into them. Mm -hmm. And um, Final Fantasy VIII and Chrono Cross both fell in that odd point in time where they hadn't quite caught on to that, so they still wanted to, to get games out really fast. So as a result, Final Fantasy VIII comes out, you know, really technically impressive, but also unbalanced AF. And Chrono <laughs> Cross fared better, but it also had the dual timelines... Um, mechanic where they're reusing a lot of areas over and over in two different timelines and then halfway through the game there's a big old twist up with your main character that forces you to go through a bunch of old areas again under wildly new circumstances and they manage to make that work but th the bottom line is they did a lot with recycled content <laughs> and they were able to make a good game on a on a relatively short um mm -hmm. development cycle and they made it work but they but they can't make that work for very much longer uh so i don't know i guess like i dream of the day that final fantasy 8 gets remade with all the time it needs to actually tell its story. And you know what? They could even do the same weird timey-wimey fuckery they did with Final Fantasy VII Remake because it's already built into the story. Make it a story about after time compression was fixed. <laughs> you know? Um, Hot take, I don't like guys on me very much. <laughs> I... I... I like Eyes on Me well enough. Like the melodies there, it's a it's a nice song to listen to. The lyrics just kind of don't work. 
But you know, it's 2022. Even that could benefit. They could rewrite the lyrics so that it sounds like it was actually written by someone who knows how the English language works. <laughs> At least it isn't Persona rap, though. Like, in terms of not knowing how English works, because... I assume you mean specifically P3. P yeah, well, yeah, because the songs, the games before P3 didn't even have lyrics, but... Like, okay... If you actually stop and listen to the battle themes in Personas 3, 4, and 5... And try to parse the English, the result is some of the wackiest grammar you've ever heard in your life. And it's it's actually kind of great, to be honest. Uh, like <laughs> it it enhances the battle themes in a weird way, <laughs> because the games are about Japanese high schoolers who would probably fuck up their English about as badly as the lyric writers of those songs do. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, it's on brand. <laughs> um, I'm a little less forgiving when it's something like Eyes on Me, which is in universe supposed to have been written by. Um, you know, a really good songwriter who, you know, made her career based on that one song. So you'd expect the song to be well written, and it's not. <laughs> but, you know, when it comes to in-universe Final Fantasy songs, I definitely would prefer uh, 1,000 words over anything in Final Fantasy 8 or 9. Just because of, they, like, the lyrics are actually, like, they work. But, you know, because karma has to balance everything, the game that gave us a thousand words also gave us that horrible song from the beginning of the game. Um. Ugh. God damn it. I knew this was going to take forever. And we still have, we still have one more part. Adding insult to injury, you do get experience points for beating Lady Apsu, but for some reason, it's a lot less experience points than you get for Anshar. Um, so <laughs> like, I, I don't think my characters even level up from this battle. Oh well. But like, okay. No, we still got 11 minutes to kill, so. I tried to look down at my timeline to see when this the, the, the fight actually ends and the part resumes, but, like, <laughs> yeah. VLC doesn't, doesn't do, do preview previews. windows. Damn it. <laughs> I guess you get what you pay for, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she will be dead soon. Well, within 10 minutes, so. <laughs> Soonish. Ugh. And this lady's been hit by so much fire and sword and electricity. <laughs> and she's just standing there. <laughs> I've been wanting to watch my Sailor Moon Blu-rays, but, like, I upgraded to Windows 11, and I only own the series on Blu-ray. There's, no oh. There's no digital copy to come with it. Um, and... Um, when I updated to Windows 11, the external Blu-ray drive that I use with this computer doesn't, it just sort of stopped being compatible for no apparent reason. Um, <clears throat> and I have, uh, it's like, I can't watch these. I spent so much money on these goddamn Blu-rays and I can't watch them anymore. Uh, I mean, I have, that's one of the main things I use my PS4 now at this point, so. Yeah, I'm like, can't you use a console? I, I have my PS3, but like... Ugh. It's, it's a nightmare to plug in whenever I want to switch my wires around. Uh, so I try to avoid using it for anything. I don't have my PS4 anymore. If I did have my PS4, I, I would use that. Because that's just a matter of switching some wires around. But, like, the PS3's inputs go wibbly every time I try to plug it into this mm -hmm. monitor. And I have to go through the process of getting it working. And, I, and then the only controller I have is this third-party controller. And, okay... This is a weird quirk that my PS3 con uh, controller has. It's a third-party controller, right? So if it's plugged in when the system turns off, instead of turning itself off as the system does, like mm -hmm. the official controller's designed to do, it switches into wireless mode, starts blinking, <sighs> and turns the console back on again. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so I have to remember every time to unplug it 
to unplug the controller from the console before I turn the console off. Otherwise, the console will turn back on. And this is really inconvenient oh for gosh. me because, because the only place I have on my desk to fit my PlayStation 3 is behind my second controller monitor. Oh. So I can't tell whether or not it's on or off. Let me like <laughs> let me just stand up and look over top of my computer monitor. Okay, little red light, it's off. <laughs> but there have been more than one occasion where my third-party controller has turned my console back on and I have headphones on so I don't hear it beep. And um it's just been sitting there. I idling in the in, in, in the, the system menu for like two days. <laughs> and uh Oops. <laughs> That's not good. Not good at all. No, it's not. It's very not good. Oh, God, she's still going. Yeah, it's still 742 now. <laughs> Timestamp. Could have at least given her her own boss theme. Yeah. She does get her own boss theme, but only for the Demon Ops Super Fight. Eh, that's something, I guess. I mean, yeah, you're right. This is a post-Final Fantasy IV world. Different battle themes should have been a thing. But, like, instead of composing unique battle themes, they mostly just made several remixes of the same battle theme from the anime. So, yeah. So we have a faster version of that battle theme. We have a slower version. We have a more threatening version, that sort of thing. Uh, that reminds me, I really need to get Blue Reflection Second Light, because that is out now. Ugh, so many games that I want to buy, and I don't have money for them. Uh. It's like, right now it's Legends RCS Blue Reflection Second Light, and, um, yeah, that's, um, hang on, there was another one. I'm not remembering what it was, though. Oh, right, the other thing that I wanted to buy was, like, the rest of the Arkham series, because I realized the only one that I own that isn't on PS4 is, um, Arkham Origins. <laughs> I mean, not a bad game. I don't like it. Well, I, I like it well enough, but I don't like it as, as much as the others. Like, I'd rather play Arkham Knight, to be honest. Arkham Knight is fun. Arkham Knight is at the bottom of my list, though, because just the way it's structured kind of bogs it, bogs it down. Oh boy. But like my um I I recently bought Arkham Asylum on PC and then mm -hmm. modded it a bunch to make the cutscenes oh, not yeah? look so bad because um Arkham Asylum the PC version isn't the remaster. The PC version is the PC version that was released bef before. Yay! Yep, she's dead. Excellent. We got her. <laughs> Long story short, the PC version of Arkham Asylum has low res pre rendered cutscenes, so you kind of need Ooh. to replace those. You need to replace them with higher res, like AI upscalings. Looks like we're just in time. <laughs> <laughs> just in time for what? We won. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh -oh. It's deep shaking. <laughs> uh oh. So at this point, the Sailor Scouts uh, believe that they've won permanently. Oh. Magically uncuffed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a common rider version where <laughs> the, the theme is like ballroom masquerade stuff <laughs> so the main rider has a has a has a has like a robotic tux and top hat and i guess the surprise mid-season second rider would be like hmm what would the surprise mid-season second rider be well yeah there's always one of those in the middle of common rider Well, 
Well, I mean, yeah. I, I say rival I like character. I, I say rival character, but the mid-season second rider is always like a frenemy kind of thing, where they're like not super like like in love with the main characters. <laughs> they're they're kind of rude to them or something, but then but they also help out. <laughs> uh I guess. <laughs> oh. God damn it, there's been so many common riders that they've probably used these ideas already. <laughs> I I don't know. Fours is pretty up there. <laughs> Have either of you, like, actually sat down to watch a full season of a uh, Kamen Rider series? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate, because they're good shows. Uh, I'm, I mostly watched O's, Double, and Four. Um, uh, Four. Fours. So, um... Yeah. <laughs> uh... They have their share of memes, I'll say that. <laughs> Happy birthday. Anyway, so this is how the final boss comes about. Oppositio Sin, who's still so fixated on doing what she was planning to do, decides to offer her life and energy to Lady Apsu, and they merge together to form Demon Apsu. She's basically a Final Fantasy boss, so, you know. So, uh, joy to the world. Those two treasure chests in the room where you fought Anshar, you can actually get them now. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were just like weird background elements that we'd never be able to touch, but no, you actually do start in this room for this section of the game. At this point, the only things you can really do are grind, visit the shops, complete the puzzle, and um, fight the final boss. This isn't a situation where the game allows you to go revisit old areas either, so if you missed stuff, you missed it. You can't go back and get it. The optional quest that you can do when you get the airship arc, uh, that's um, out the window now. You're way past the point where you can go back and do that. So the only optional content that you can tackle during this part of the game is to fight a whole bunch of monsters for puzzle pieces. Fun. So, anyway. <laughs> I think at this point I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to grind. So I'm like, I look at my at my levels and I'm like, I'm not even level 45. I'm, I'm still under leveled for the last five bosses. <laughs> and I'm about to fight the final boss like this. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll just fight her and lose. But I'll try my damnedest. So I'm like... And then I'm trying to remember where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> because, like, I know that there's the basement, but I'm like, wait, which way do I go to get to the basement? And then I remember, oh, yeah, these are doors. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The final boss of Sailor Moon. Oh, boy. Story. Buckle up, because it's going to take a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 